Here's a little number you may not have heard of, but soon will. Miller's Crossing by the Coen Brothers, made in 1990, following their success with Raising Arizona and right behind Barton Fink. From Fargo to the Big Lebowski, and No Country for Old Men, probably most notably Blood Simple, their first film, there's usually some sort of detective trying to figure out something or keep another detective from figuring out something or other. And, uh... Here we go. <laughs> Miller's Crossing takes place in a prohibitionary gangland divided by two opposing mob boss powers, Leo and Casper. Okay, basically, everything's fine between them, except Leo is dating Verna, whose brother, this guy, well, Tom. is screwing over Casper. And it's up to Tom, our hero and Seamus, who's screwing Verna, to stop the bloodbath. And the Dane, assisted to Casper, just wants to kill Tom on general principle. Awesome. All of this is all in the first act, not to mention the trailer, so I haven't spoiled a damn thing. That ought to give you an idea of the complexities and surprises that this movie has in store for you. The Coen brothers' attention to detail is ever-present in this movie, making note every nuance of the characters is integral to the story. As if taking everything they've learned from Blood Simple and Raising Arizona, they cram this movie with suspense and intensity, creating crescendos of steadily built manic mayhem, hitting you in areas you didn't expect. <laughs> the music by Carter Burwell. This is probably one of the most defining aspects of this movie because its overall theme seems to be the antithesis of what's happening on screen in the most literal sense. However, in an esoteric sense, it lends an unusually high amount of understanding to these thugs and their circumstances, not judging them as evil, but as people. Only for a moment does it dip into the horrors of actuality. The excerpts of Danny Boy, Running Wild, and Goodnight Sweetheart elevate the characters to a very human level, allowing even the person with the most acute sense of morality to be able to lend an understanding ear. Two of us were about bad enough to deserve each other. Are we? We're a couple of heels, Tom. Yes, we are. The score is usually focused on moments involving Tom and deep thought about something. This is interesting because besides his ability to fight or lack thereof, the question's up in the air. He is perhaps the most emotionally cold person in the movie. Nobody knows anybody. Not that well. Or the warmest. Of course, there's always that wild card when the love is involved. The question's up in the air. The score is both close and far away, just like Tom. Prose. Deep story with a lot of replay value, great music, and great look and feel, and great writing. I like him. He's honest. He's got a heart. Then it's true what they say. Opposites are right. The emotionally ambiguous protagonist, Tom, who leads us through the movie, is perhaps as complex as the story that unfolds. A classic Coen clusterfuck. And that's one of the things that makes this movie so special. It's the Coen brothers in classical form, making straight up noir. Sweet. Cons. The story starts coming on fast, and if you're not ready, it can leave you for a bit, but it'll give you time to find a train car to jump on. Those who don't like a lot of dialogue, this one is heavy in dialogue. All of it has a point but heavy nonetheless, and can be discriminated into the ear not attuned to certain old phrases and sayings. You got references. You've been to college. We only take yeggs what's been to college. Ain't that right, Dave? <laughs> Overall, to use a cliched catch line, this is a cool criminal caper. An awesome game of cat versus cat versus cat versus cat versus cat. That's a lot of... complex movie with a ton of replay value. Must see for crime movie, Coen Brothers fans, and fans of movies in general, and easily a showreel shiner. This review is dedicated to the memory of Ginger Hinkson. If there was ever a definition of family, that's her. You are missed.